Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and I want to invite you to our Bible study today. I trust that you'll be with us the whole time and uh, make it a study with us. If you're reading through the Old Testament with us, then you should be looking at 1 Kings chapter 9, Isaiah 27 and 28. But today we'll be in John chapter 9. Now, we want to be praying for Israel. As you know, there's many been killed, many been taken hostage, and the war is uh, going on there. So we need to pray for our brothers and sisters there. Um, there are many Christians, uh, thousands of Christians are there as well. So let's just pray for them right now. Father, we just thank you for your love to us. We thank you that you will help those, send your angels and help the Christians and the others alike, Lord, that uh, Lord, that you'll just speak to each heart and draw them to yourself through this tumultuous time. We pray now you'll speak to our hearts as we get into your word. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. All right. Now, uh, one thing, we're uh, trying to increase the sound. Some people have said that our sound is not very loud on the uh, broadcast, so we're working on that. And then also that we would have nice large print here for you so you can read it well. John chapter 9, it says that also their red letter print from the uh, New King James. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he should be was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. And I think it's very important right from the outset that we understand that all sickness and disease is not as a result of the individual sin. Yes, there is uh, sin in the world. And when Adam and Eve sinned, they passed on that sin nature to us. That's why it talks about it in the Old Testament where David said that, and I believe it's Isaiah I mean, in uh, Psalm 53, that in sin, my mother conceived me. Now, that doesn't mean that it's sinful to have children. No, it's a blessing to have children, and, and we're supposed to have children. But what is saying that the sin nature is passed on from the parents to the children. All right. And so that is true. And there is sickness that because of just genetic defects in our bodies and so on and and as we go along there will be more sicknesses and more diseases that people have hello esther it's good to see you on sister but uh also to understand that the disciples were asking did his parents do some specific sin in order for them to be for this child to be born blind and jesus said no then they ask also, did, uh, was it because the child sinned, the baby sinned? Well, obviously, no. Neither of those were true. But a lot of people today, they believe those things. Even you might think it's funny that the apostles would ask it. Well, I think a lot of things are recorded in Scripture so that we will know uh, as well because there's a lot of people that have those questions. Now, Yes, uh, Jesus on occasion told someone that um, several occasions he said, go and sin no more. And all so that a worse thing not come upon you. So yes, there are things that cause sickness in people that have uh, sinned and does something wrong. But in James chapter 5, it says, uh, we're to pray for the sick, anointing them for oil with oil and praying over them. And it says, if they have sinned, then um, that sin will be forgiven for them. And of course, then the Lord would heal them. So uh, there are cases, but 
uh, obviously, in this case, the parents hadn't sinned, and the child that was born had not sinned, okay? So he was born blind, and but Jesus said that uh, God might be glorified. You see, God knew that he was going to heal him, and that people would see that. And it'd be a wonderful testimony for the Lord that he could give the rest of his life. And so let's look at that. Then, uh, Jesus says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. <clears throat> the night is coming when no one can work. And I think we need to realize that too. Spiritual darkness is setting in. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Remember the uh, seven I am's, and this is one of them. Jesus is the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the man made, the, the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat at the gate, uh, who sat and begged? All right, so... These miracles that are in the Gospel of John are uh, singled out to show us that Jesus is God, the deity of Jesus. And that's the book of John. Uh, remember the four living creatures, the deity. And this would be like the eagle that flies over, which is a picture of deity. And um, so... This is another one of those miracles where only God could do, of course. God, the only ones that miracles are done by God. But I think here in John, uh, God wants to, make, wants to make it so obvious. God the Father wants to make it so obvious that Jesus is God. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hello, Emmanuel. It's good to see you on. So we will continue on then in verse 9 of chapter 9. Uh, some said, this is he, and others said, he is like him. Right away, Satan sets in doubts. When people see miracles, well, the person was blind, but now they see, and, and everything's normal. And so they just kind of forget about that he was blind before. And he said, I am he. All right. He's kind of being left out of the thing, isn't he? Uh, therefore, they said to him, uh, how were you, your eyes opened? And he answered and said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received sight. Then they said to him, Oh, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him who um, formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Okay, well, they're not going to be very helpful, are they? Now, it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. You see right away? That's uh, where they're going to attack Jesus. They don't care about the man and the, that is. His sight had been restored to him. No, they are upset because it happened on the Sabbath. Let me say this again. Nowhere in the Old Testament does it say it's you can't heal anybody on the Sabbath. That's against the law. Obviously not. How foolish, how self-centered, how prideful these religious leaders are. They don't care that someone who could not see, and now he's able to see. That didn't make any difference to them. But, well, when was he healed? Was it on the Sabbath? Oh, no, it was on the Sabbath day. Okay, 
you know, and that is, uh, we see that sometimes with people that uh, they don't believe in miracles for today. They have a form of godliness, but, oh no, you can't do miracles. Uh, you can't, no, no, that's not part of today's uh, church. That was just the early church. Oh, no, no, you can't speak in tongues. Oh, no, you can't do the gifts of miracles. You can't, uh, there's nine of the gifts that aren't for today. Uh, you know that. Well, no, we don't know that. We disagree with that. That's contrary to the word of God. God does all the miracles that he used to do in former days. And it's just so often we're doubtful. People don't have faith and they don't care to check it out and find out is God still raising the dead? Is he still um, healing people today? Is he still doing miracles? Is he still saving? Obviously he is, all right? But these people are not interested in getting right with God or living for him. They're interested in uh, the law and whether or not he might have broke the law. He didn't break the law, but they were saying that he did. And we're going to see that. And so, okay. And so I, he said, um, then when they took him to the Pharisees, uh, so I went and washed and I saw him aside. And then they said to him, oh, where is he? he? He said, I do not know. They brought him uh, who formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Now it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I see. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Hmm. Others said, how can a man who was a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. Just like there is a division today among those who are believers and those who are not believers. They said to the blind man again, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, he is a prophet. See, this man, he didn't really know. He just knew that and Jesus had healed his eyes, but he wasn't even sure who it was that had done that because when you're blind, you can't see very good. And you can't see it all. But the Jews did not believe concerning him. So they didn't believe the miracle. They didn't believe that God had done anything different, uh, that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. So now uh, some are checking into it and asking the parents, you know, was he born blind, that type of thing. And they asked them saying, is this your son who you say was born blind? Do you see how they're uh, putting this? Uh, who you say was born blind. Now they're even questioning the parents uh, that, they might be lying about, and this is a setup of uh, that you say that he was born blind. Well, maybe he was pretending all this time. No, this is craziness, isn't it? How then does he now see? And his parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he, wa he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes? We do not know. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. Now, you say, well, that sounds a little strange because they knew, of course, that he was blind when he was born. And, uh, but they're afraid. And um, probably rightly so because the Jews, uh, the religious leaders said they were going to throw out anybody um, they would not throw him out of the synagogue. They would not allow him to come to the synagogue. And this was a big part of their life in those days. Their life was uh, wrapped around the synagogue. Uh, that's where they had, the, they had the marriages. They had their 
worship every Saturday. They, a lot of places they would have school for the, the children and, and that sort of thing. And then their friends and relatives would be there. And so the religious leader saying, if every and if anybody believes in him, you will be cast out of this synagogue. So they could not just come right out and say what they really believe. And you know, there is a lot of that type of thing in the church today. And there are people, oh no, you can't believe that uh, gifts are of the Spirit are for today. No, that was just for the early church. Oh no, you can't believe that God can heal people like he used to do. Oh no, you can't believe that God cast out demons still today. Um, well, you know, I don't know about getting saved. Well, you got to be baptized or else you're not really saved. And uh, <clears throat> uh, until you're baptized. And and then, of course, um, you got to be um, baptized when you're a baby. You've got to take your first communion. You have to be married in the church. And, and on and on it goes. And they try to add to the Word of God and take away from the Word of God. And so these things are happening in the church even today. And of course, um, then you couldn't be um, a good member of the church unless you listen to what the religious leaders are going to say to you. Oh no, our authority is not the church. Our authority, or anyone that claims that theirs is the only church, no, our authority is the word of God and what Jesus has to say. And so here they are. Um, so then the, his parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, give God the glory. And that's what he's trying to do. <laughs> we know that this man is a sinner. Oh boy, they've already decided. They don't care. Uh, what anybody thinks. They don't care what happened. The facts uh, don't confuse us with the facts, in other words, uh, they're saying. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Now, you know, sometimes when people get saved, that's what people do the relatives that are in certain churches and so on. Oh no, we liked you better when you were drinking and getting drunk and partying with us and having all the fun. And, and you're not any fun anymore. You don't get drunk. You don't do what the things that you used to do. Well, praise God that they don't do the things they used to do. They forget about how they abused um, their children and their wife and when they were drinking and all these sorts of things and taking drugs and uh, living immoral lives and so on. That doesn't seem to matter to people. Oh, you've changed and we don't like you like you were. Well, you know what? God likes us when we believe in him, when we receive him as our Lord and Savior, when we repent of our sins and, and live, try to live holy, godly lives in this earth while we're here that others might see something different about us and they might know that it is somebody different in us that we've received Christ as our Lord and Savior and he has changed our lives. Well, the world is not uh, open to that a lot of times, even like they were not open to this man and him being born blind and now being able to see, they're just not going to accept it. No matter what he says or does, whatever God does, they just turn a blind eye themselves to the teaching of the Word of God and what God is doing. And when Jesus, God himself, was right present with them on the earth, this is how they treat God and this how they treat Jesus is how they treat the Father. Um, and so we go down here and then they said again, what did he do to you? And he's gone over it how many times? How did he open your eyes? 
He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Ooh, that strikes them in the heart, doesn't it? Then they reviled him and said, you are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. Oh, yes, you didn't even check to see that he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Okay, and, um, and they didn't even check that Moses said that there will be one like me that comes, a prophet, listen to him. They didn't listen to Jesus. The man answered and said to them, why, this is a marvelous thing. Now, he's going to get his little dig in here again, that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Boy, he's preaching to these guys. He's teaching them. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. Oh, you can check through scripture. I don't remember any, even in the Old Testament, that talk about that. No, this is a miracle from God. God is the creator God, Jesus is, and he created his eyes new. He made them the way they were supposed to be made. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, you were completely born in sins, and are you teaching us? And they cast him out. So they were uh, saying that because he was born blind, he was a sinner. <laughs> oh, boy. And Jesus heard that they had cast him out. God always knows uh, what's happening. He wants to encourage us. And when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? So the man is, you know, probably uh, entertaining some doubts uh, in the way that he's getting treated and everything. How uh, Can you imagine the tra trauma that he's going through? He wasn't able to see, now he can see, and now people are arguing about who uh, Jesus is. And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? So he had an honest heart. He had a searching heart. He had a sincere heart. And Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. So now you can look at me. Uh, I'm the one. I am the Savior of the world, and disbelieve in me. Then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. And that's what God wants to see, is that we turn to him with our whole heart. We repent of our sin, if there is any sin. In this case, he wasn't born blind because of his sin, but every person who comes into the world needs to turn to Christ, even if you were baptized as a baby. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. So those who realize that they're a sinner and need a salvation they're in spiritual darkness. If they turn to him, he will save them. But in those who see, those who think they see spiritually, oh yeah, we're better than these sinners. We tithe and give mint. And, you know, this is what they were saying um, uh, when they were praying and so on. But uh, this man, he turned to Christ to save him. And that's what we need to do and that those who see may be made blind. So the blind leading the blind. Many religious leaders today are blind, and they're teaching people uh, against the Word of God, against faith, against creation. And uh, they're not teaching the Word of God like they should. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him 
heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Yeah, they knew he was talking about them. And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. If they were blind spiritually, if they they are blind spiritually, but here they have eyes to see. They saw the miracles that Jesus did. They heard the words that he said, but they still didn't want to believe. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. So, a wonderful a miracle that the Lord did. And uh, just all of these are what the Creator does all the time. Uh, making grape juice. He does that on the vine all the time. Um, healing the blind that couldn't see. He makes our eyes when we're born. He knits us together in, his, in our mother's womb. And uh, so he does this right in front of them. Walks on water. Um, he is the creator God. And we see that in this book. And so it makes us have faith in him, and we receive the Lord as our Savior. We then love our, we love God and we love our fellow man. And so that's what this book is all about, uh, the book of John. And I trust that you're enjoying it. Now let's go to prayer again. And Father, we just thank you now for your word and how you're speaking to our hearts through it. I just pray to again for Israel and Lord that you'll, turn many hearts to you, even through this turmoil that's going on, but also that you will uh, stop the fighting and uh, help them to overcome their enemies that have joined up against them. And you said that you would um, raise up a banner before us and to scatter the enemies. And so we know that this is from Satan, all the attacks against Israel. And so we pray for them right now and just, uh, that you'll be with them in a special way. Pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, the Lord bless you and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.